Hello and welcome to this video on immunosuppressants. This video is a crash course, meaning I'll quickly cover all of the important immunosuppressants and the things that you absolutely need to remember for your exam. So let's start with it. So for, for this topic, you need to understand the IL-2 pathway. And why is that important? We'll talk about this because most of the immunosuppressants act on this particular pathway. That's why it's important for you to remember this for your exam. Now, I know this is a topic that students struggle with usually. That's why I've added a lot of mnemonics, a lot of visual cues, things that will help you remember and put this topic together in your brain. So let's remember the IL-2 pathway. It's actually really interesting. So something comes in and activates this receptor, right? What is this receptor? Let me get my pen out. This is actually, this is actually toll-like receptor. We call this the toll-like receptor. This is usually present on the surface of the macrophages. This is the toll-like receptor. What does the toll-like receptor do? The toll-like receptor activates calcinogen. So any, anything that can cause inflammation activates this receptor. This activates calcineurin. What does calcineurin do? Calcineurin converts something known as NFATP into NFAT. Now this all sounds really, really complicated and, and exactly for that because when I was uh, learning this topic as a student, I understood that this is going to be very difficult. So I repeated this concept throughout the video. So don't, don't really worry. So what does NFATP mean? P means it's phosphorylated. NFAT means nuclear factor of activated T cells. Why don't, why didn't they add an abbreviation of, uh, of OF? I don't know. It's just nuclear factor of activated T cells. So it's basically phosphorylated nuclear factor of NFAT, right? So here you see there is no phosphorus, right? So it's the dephosphorylation. If something, if phosphorus is added to something, that's known as phosphorylation, right? If phosphorus is added to something, the end product has phosphorus, that is known as phosphorylation. If the end product does not have phosphorus and the starting product, oh my god, that's really bad handwriting. Yeah, the starting product had phosphorus and there is nothing here. So that means dephosphorylation. So NFATP has been dephosphorylated into NFAT or nuclear factor of activated T cells has been dephosphorylated. What does that lead to? That leads to the NF. NF stands for nuclear factor, just like here, nuclear factor. What is this Greek letter? This is kappa. It leads to the activation of a DNA factor known as nuclear factor kappa B. This nuclear factor kappa B is important in the transcription of what is known as inflammatory cytokines. Right? So you're going to have to kind of remember this pathway because this will help you hit hard on a, of all of those concepts that, that, that are going to be tested in your exam on immunosuppressants. So what happens? Toll-like receptors activate calcineurin. Calcineurin dephosphorylates nuclear factor of activated T cells, right, which activates nuclear factor kappa B, which leads to the production of inflammatory cytokines. And what does that do? Especially IL-2. You're going to have to remember IL-2 for this video, for this topic. Just remember IL-2 is highly important when you want to suppress the immune system and specifically infl inflammation because it's really, really important in that. Easily. Now we can just start with each immunosuppressant class. So calcineurin inhibitors, where do the calcineurins come in? We know that. This is the toll-like receptor. I keep repeating this pathway throughout this video so as you can remember what happens. What does toll-like receptor do? You know it. It activates calcineurin. It activates calcineurin. What does activated calcineurin do? It dephosphorylates NFAT into nuclear factor of activated T cells. What does that do? It activates nuclear factor kappa B. And what does that do? It produces which cytokines? Exactly, inflammatory cytokines. It produces inflammatory cytokines and particularly IL-2. So what do calcineurin inhibitors do? Well, obviously they will inhibit calcineurin. That's really simple. And do you know the names? Cyclosporin and tacrolimus. It's actually that simple, guys. It's that simple. What do cyclosporin and tacrolimus do? Is that they inhibit 
the transcription of which end result of this process is inflammatory cytokines and particularly IL-2. What do cyclosporin and tacrolimus do? They inhibit calcineurin. So what are they known as? They are known as calcineurin inhibitors. It's that simple. What does cyclosporin bind to? This is important for you to remember in the exam. I've added the topics that added only the tidbits that are important for you to remember in the exam. Cyclosporin and tacrolimus both inhibit calcineurin. But how do they do it? They bind to these things. They bind to these things present in the nucleus. Cyclosporin binds to cyclophilin and tacrolimus binds to FK506 or FK binding protein. Okay. How are we going to remember this, right? So I've added some things that help you remember not only, so to remember cyclosporine, it's very easy to remember that cyclosporine binds cyclophilin. Philly means loving, so cyclodoving thing binds cyclosporine. That's pretty simple. And when you think of tacrolimus, how I remember it is tacrolimus sounds kind of smart. For some reason, to me, it always sounded kind of smart, right? So it's a braining thing, braining thing to remember FK506. Only the smart people in the end and those who watch this video are going to remember. It. And it's going to tie into something really interesting. How this smart thing, how this smart memory hook that I'm giving you, the tacrolimus is for smart people. And smart people are going to remember this. Tacrolimus binds FKBP or FK506. So when we study pharmacology, it's not only necessary to study the mode of action. The most, one of the most important things that is usually tested in the exam is the side effects, right? So we need to remember the side effects. Cyclosporin causes this wide array of like highly spread out specific things like nephrotoxicity. You can have to remember ne nephrotoxicity. It's very important that you remember cyclosporin causes nephrotoxicity. And I'm gonna make you remember that. Just, just hold on for a minute. It causes hypertension. It causes gingival hyperplasia. What does tacrolimus do, right? Tacrolimus causes more potent neurotoxicity. Remember I told you, tacrolimus is a brainy drug to remember because it binds that brainy thing known as FK506. Only, only big brained people can remember that. That's why it causes neurotoxicity because it's, it's too hard on the brain. And it also causes diabetes mellitus. Now you might be wondering that how am I gonna remember these specific side effects? Both of these drugs actually cause neuro uh, nephrotoxicity as well, but cyclosporin has more potent nephrotoxicity. Nephrotoxicity, hypertension, gingival hyperplasia, and also hirsutism is a side effect of cyclosporin. Right. So to remember cyclosporin, you're going to remember this particular thing. This, I tried to use AI to actually get this picture. I, I used AI generator of, uh, basically, I wanted to get a kidney, a kidney, a particularly hairy kidney with teeth-like feet, right, like this riding a bicycle so cyclosporine causes nephrotoxicity a hairy kidney riding a bicycle riding a bicycle you can remember these tooth like projections as gingival hyperplasia you can remember the hairy kidney as hirsutism you can remember the kidney riding a bicycle as nephrotoxicity of cyclosporine and what is when you when you cycle something your sympathetic system gets activated what do you get in turn increased pressures simple as that very easy makes sense you remember everything gingival hyperplasia hypertension hirsutism nephrotoxicity you've got it all right so how are we going to remember tacrolimus by tacrolimus you remember tic tacs what do tic tacs do tic tacs can give you diabetes mellitus Tic Tacs are sweet. They can give you diabetes mellitus. That's why it gives diabetes mellitus. Tacrolimus gives diabetes mellitus. What does tacrolimus do? Something else. It binds FKBP, FK506. It's a brainy thing to remember. If you remember FK506 and stuff like that, stuff that really, really complicated, it's a brainy thing to remember. And what happens to those people? What happens to those really, really gunners, the smart people in your medical school? They get toxic. They get neurotoxicity from all of the toxic stuff in their brain. You're going to remember. It's a weird thing to remember, but you're going to remember it. Believe me. Cyrolimus. How does Cyrolimus act? Now, all of these things, you know, when I was studying for my exam, all of these things sounded really complicated. It was very difficult to get into these topics. But 
so when I was making this video, I was trying to make it in a way so that you actually end up remembering the important stuff for your exam. So let's get into Cyrodiamus. Oh my God, it's the, it's, it's the same pathway again, right? It's the TLR. What does the TLR do? You're going to tell me this time. What does the TLR activate? Say it. Unless you're sitting in the library, say it. What does TLR do? It activates calcineurin. What does calcineurin do? It dephosphorylates nuclear factor of activated P cells. Nuclear factor of activated P cells. Dephosphorylates. What does that do? Say it. What does that do? It activates nuclear factor. Yes, kappa B. It activates nuclear factor kappa P. And what does that lead to the transcription of inflammatory cytokines like IL-2? What does that do? Now, what does IL-2 do? Obviously, it's going to bind to something, right? It binds the IL-2 receptor. This is known as the IL-2 receptor. This is the IL-2R. I should have written R with it. Excuse my handwriting, but handwriting is not the point here. The point is that you remember IL-2 binds the IL-2R receptor. What does that do? It activates the MTOR signaling pathway. And this is where cyrolimus works, right? MTOR further leads to the, uh, to the transcription of IL-2. And this is the IL-2 receptor that I talked about. Let me clear the pen markings. Now, where does cyrolimus act? Cyrolimus, hello, hello, deactivates MTOR. I hope you're not sleeping at this point. Because what does cyrolimus do? IL-2, when it is released, goes and binds to the IL-2R receptor R. So this activates MTOR signaling pathway. What does cyrolimus do? It blocks the MTOR. Now something you'll have to remember, something, a memory hook that I use is that cyrolimus has RO or OR and mTOR signaling pathway. That's how I remember it. Or something else you also remember it is cyro as a big, big, R in it, therefore it blocks the R receptor. It's very dumb, I know it's very dumb, but it's gonna help you remember. Believe me, it's gonna help you remember. Cyrolimus blocks mTOR. You wanna go through it again? We can go through it once again. So what does IL-2 do? IL-2, let me clear the pen markings. So IL-2 activates IL-2R, leads to tra transcription of MTOR, activates the signaling system, it activates IL-2, IL-2R, cyrolimus blocks MTOR signaling pathway. Simple as that. Now, how are we going to remember the side effects? Cyrolimus. This is how we're going to remember it. If you take, if you remember cyrolimus, take a deep sigh. Like, oh, sigh. Cyrolimus. A cyrolimus. And that's how you're going to remember the pan cytopenia. Pan cytopenia. I'm going to have a different memory hook as well for you. Because I know... Pictures and these mnemonics, these weird ass, dumb mnemonics always work for me during the exam. Cyrolimus causes cytopenia, pancytopenia, pancytopenia, right? So you can also remember this psi, right? For some reason, this is known as a psi uh, in English, right? So what does a psi do? You can see the psi stabbing these red blood cells. You can see the psi stabbing the red blood cells and also some white blood cells as well. So it's stabbing all of those cells. And I think this was an eosinophil. This was intended to be an eosinophil that I draw. So it's stabbing all of these different kinds of cells. Therefore, the psi is causing cytopenia, pancytopenia. Interesting. Hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia, this causes as well. And if you remember, I put in slightly different colored hyperlipidemia side effect in the cyclosporines as well. Hyperglycemia was a side effect of tacrolimus. But what does it not cause? It's not nephrotoxic. That's important for you to remember. It is not nephrotoxic. Unlike cyclosporine and tacrolimus, both were nephrotoxic. This is not. Therefore, if, if you see in this picture, the kidney is clear. The, there's a, let me draw a wall between the psi and the kidney. The kidney is completely clear of the psi. The psi is not stabbing the kidney. It's only stabbing the cells. That's why it causes cytopenia. Cyrolimus, cytopenia. Rho, R-O, binds to R-O or O-R, mTOR, mTOR, it binds to mTOR, R, I-L-2-R, simple as that. Now let's look at Bacilliximab, that sounds complicated, Bacilliximab, what's the mode of action of Bacilliximab? Oh, 
my god it's the same pathway again that's why i started this video with this particular pathway because it's important for you to remember this what does this do it activates calcineurin dephosphorylates nfat nuclear factor effectivated t cells it activates nuclear factor kappa b which leads to the activation of inflammatory cytokines or il2 in particular what does il2 do il2 binds to the il2r which leads to the activation of mtor which is the site of action of our friend Pyrolimus, which causes pancytopenia, but we're not talking about that right now. mTOR causes the production of IL-2 again, and this is the IL-2 R receptor. This is, these are basal seeds, right? These are the basal seeds. Pesilexamam. So you can assume that these basal seeds are going in and binding to the receptor and thus blocking it. If you ever had basil seeds in a drink, sometimes what they do is they end up being the drink. So if, if you have put something, if you have basil seeds in something, it ends up being, it ends up blocking your whole drink. It takes up the whole taste. That's what exactly basiliximab does to the IL-2R. Those, those tiny little seeds, what they do is they end up blocking, they end up coming here all in the middle and blocking the whole receptor blocking where IL-2R acts. It's a monoclonal antibody. It acts on the IL-2R receptor. That's smart. That makes sense. Where does, where does cyclosporin and tacrolimus act? You tell me. Is it calcineurin? Yes, you are right. This is where cyclosporin and tacrolimus act. This is where our friend cyrolimus act. And bacilliximab acts on the IL-2R or the IL-2 receptor.